welcome to our program, Lux Mundi, the light of the world. We have an exciting program today. Thank you for joining us. Our title today is From Buddhism to Christ. And we have with us today our guest, Andrea. And uh, Andrea, thank you for coming to be with us today. I thank you for having We're me. We're exciting to hear you. And yes. uh, I've known you for a little over a year now, and I've heard some of the details of your life. And I thought it'd be interesting for our listeners, our, our viewers, to, to learn more about you and your experience. Yes, thank you. Every individual has uh, a unique experience. And uh, yes. I know you have a special uh, story to tell us. And uh, I have some questions for you. And, okay. um, well, I think it would be good um, to start with your childhood, your youth. Uh, you weren't... Uh, or were you born into a Buddhist home? No, I was not. I was born into a Christian home. And, um, yeah, we went to church. And, yes, I knew about Jesus and God. I was, didn't know anything about Buddhism. Yeah. Now, actually, um, you were born in the U.S., weren't you? Yes, I was. As I was. And we're actually yes. now living in Sweden, aren't we? Yes. Yes. Uh, we don't live in the same place, but... Uh, when we think of uh, Sweden, it's not really a, a stronghold for Buddhism, is it? No, not really. It's um, a little unusual. Yeah, and um, so you grew up in a Christian home, and you went to church, uh, but somehow you didn't stay with that, uh, those values that your parents were hoping to teach you. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't like a lot of rules, and as a youngster, I saw other young ones, youngsters my age around me, yes. and it seemed to me that they were having much more fun than I was having. And every, with me, the rules were there's a lot of no's and no yeses, just a lot of don'ts and no do's, and, and right. I didn't like that. So Christianity was more of a hindrance than a, than a help to you in your Yeah, at that time <laughs> I felt, yes, yeah. I felt it was like holding me back. I wanted to test my wings, I wanted to do things, and it was yeah. like, Everything was like, no, no, no. And yeah. Uh, so you didn't really have a personal uh, friendship with Jesus then, did you? No, I did not. Yeah. No. So in a way, it wasn't like you were li leaving Christ because you never really fully knew him, I don't think. No, I didn't. I never knew Christ uh, personally. No. Um, no, I didn't really care yeah. at that time. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so you moved to Sweden and... Uh, of course, you didn't just when you went out to test your own wings become a Buddhist. Uh, how did no. you become a Buddhist, or, oh. or do you know? <laughs> yes. Do you know why? Uh, yes, I met um, an old um, uh, girlfriend who told me that, that she had become Buddhist. Uh, we had known each other before. Um, she was, I guess, she was atheist, but she wasn't Christian, and um, our paths parted. But we met again later on. Uh, and she told me she had become Buddhist, and I was surprised. Mm, yeah. And she was dressed normally, no strange clothes. Yes. And I looked at her and I said, how can you be Buddhist? You, you haven't shaved your hair, and, yeah. and <laughs> you don't have any orange robes on. She says, no, it's not that kind of Buddhism. It's, uh, yeah. it's, uh, this one has no rules. And that was another one with me, no rules. Yeah. I said, really? She says, yes, but at that point, you know, I had been, I come from a Christian home and I wasn't really interested in being religious, All so right. I let her know that. So you, you, would you say you were atheist then or just non-practicing? I was just non-practicing. I was do, not doing anything. No. I didn't want, I wanted to be as far away from a religion as possible at yeah. that point. And how was your conscience then? <laughs> uh, did you have a sense of right no. or wrong? Or yeah, yeah, there were some values instilled in me. I, you shouldn't commit adultery. So I wasn't messing around with yeah. <laughs> married people and, yeah. and other things, you know. Um, being um, moralistic, not stealing, not killing. And the, right. the Ten Commandments was instilled there, you know. Yes. But um, other than that, no. Yeah. All right. Well, how old were you about that time when you met this woman and eventually became a Buddhist? I guess it was through her that you became Buddhist? Yeah, I was about 33. All right. When I met her. And um, she told me about Buddhism. And yeah. um, and I and I wasn't really interested, but then 
she told me about the, a, a chant that they do in this Buddhism, and she gave me a card with it on it, and I had it up in my apartment when I was looking at it, and I wasn't really saying it, but it was, must have been registering. All right, and, yes. um, and things started happening in my life that made it seem interesting to get to know what this Buddhism was about, really. So I yeah. called her back and started yeah. attending meetings. And, um, now, did you have a, uh, we wouldn't say a church or a synagogue, did you have a temple or was it in no, a home? No, we always met in people's homes. In people's homes, all yes. right. There, there was a, a community, we called it a community center. Yeah. Uh, there are temples in Japan and stuff, but we didn't have them in New York. We met in each other's homes and a community center. All right, so this was in New York? Yes. All right, before you moved to Sweden? Yes. I see. I moved to Sweden uh, two years after. So All when right. I came to Sweden, I was already Buddhist. And you came as a missionary to Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, uh, very interesting. And um, how, how did your children accept that, your parents, your friends? Oh, I, try, I, I, I taught my mother to chant. <laughs> All right. And um, she, she was in the church, but uh, there was a separation between her and my father at the time when I got into Buddhism. So I taught my mother to chant, and, and she started chanting, but then they bounced her right back into church again. All right. <laughs> and she decided, no, nah, she didn't really like it, so she got back into church again. Yeah. And so that was one of my questions to so one yeah. of the Buddhist leaders. Well, you know, my mother started chanting, then she went back to church. She says, well, it works that way sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And your children, and they were well. My ch my children weren't old enough, maybe, to understand. Yeah, they were they were uh, young teenagers, not teenagers, but they were. They didn't have any much to say about that. No, but you took them along to the meetings, and no, not until uh, once I did, but I didn't really mm, yeah. feel like dragging them into that. That All was right. something I was getting into. Yeah, so they were more or less free to do what they chose to yeah, do. Yeah, they were living with my mother and she was teaching them. She was instilling right. Christianity in them. <laughs> yes. And um, how did your friends, did you tell any of your friends or? Yeah, they thought it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. friends were worldly friends. Of course, they thought yeah. that was cool. <laughs> and did any of them join you? Yeah, some of them did. Yeah. Yeah, we went to meetings together. All right. And did they fasten for the religion themselves or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Interesting. Now, um, well, you know, within Christianity, it's a very wide uh, scope. Uh, the image of what God is, who he is, it, it can vary uh, from Christian to Christian. And, and, you know, just in talking with you, Buddhism, it's, it's not just one box. There are many different facets and phases of Buddhism, isn't there? Yeah, there are many branches of Buddhism. Uh. Um, when I told my friends about it, they had the same reaction I did with yeah. my friend. Well, where's, why, is you, why do you still have hair and wear your robes? Yes. You know, and I had to explain, well, there were many yeah. different uh, branches. That's kind of the first uh, conjug conj yeah. uh, con um, conjugation I, or um, yeah. thoughts I get in my mind yes, of Buddhism, of something maybe from Thailand or yeah. India, yeah. Uh, South Asia, yeah. Southeast that, Asia. Yeah. That was one of the things that attracted me to just that branch of Buddhism was because you didn't have to wear special clothes or cut your hair or do any. There was none of those types of rules. So just be happy. <laughs> just be happy. Yeah. All right. And you do that by doing this chant. Yeah. So as far as Buddha, you know, we have this figure of Buddha. Yeah. Is that, did you have that? No, 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 no figures. No, uh, because that's no. We, we didn't we didn't uh, that wasn't uh, something we used to worship. Yeah, we because uh, from my research, Buddha lived actually around four, five, six hundred years before Christ, yeah. uh, sometime mm. around then, mm. and uh, grew up in India, North mm. India, and mm. of course there are differences of researchers or opinions of yeah. who he was and what he did, and yeah. and uh, so your your branch of Buddhism that you were involved in was removed from that no special no, clothes no no special clothes no special rules uh, yeah just uh, chanting this chant and um 
no, no, no figures. You can have a figure of Buddha in your home if you wanted to, but uh, that wasn't what we used in our practice to worship with. No, no. You know, so um, the, the, the Buddha figure, that's just, just a statue. We, d we didn't pray to that. We didn't worship. But you, you mentioned you had an altar in your, your house, yes, uh, your home. Yes. I, and uh, so you didn't go to, to uh, buildings. You, you continue to meet in the homes. Yeah, every home has an altar. All right, every home has an altar, yeah. yeah. And would that be the, the uh, you could make bedroom it, and the yeah, You could have room it wherever, wherever you, you want in yeah. your home, that uh, a, a place where you, where you would invite others to sit. It yeah. could be in your kitchen, depending on your apartment, how it's laid out, no, or your yeah. home, or uh, put it in, a, they say, a worthy place. Yes. Yeah, so would <laughs> Not you in the bathroom or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so would you offer incense or a yes. cake or bread or... You can, you offer incense, you burn candles, uh, everything on that altar had a meaning. The incense was the sense of smell and candles was means just sight and the bell was means the sense of hearing, the bead, just sense of touch. Uh, yeah. And um, as far as plants on the altar, no flowers, greens, because flowers die so fast, so and, and green plants last much longer. And, and, yes. and water means um, refreshing or purity. All right. So. And uh, you weren't so many here in Sweden, you, you weren't so many um, that belonged to this movement. What what kept you going? Because it was uh, a, a very small minority. Yeah, it was at that time. I believed it was the chanting that I was doing and the fellowship All of right. the people and uh, yeah, the, the reading that we were doing and yeah, I, I believed that at that time that this chanting was what was keeping me going. Yeah. So it didn't bother you that you weren't uh, in the majority. No. What bothered me sometimes was in the back of my head that there was um, that this there was no God present in this. All right. But I, I I kept pushing it back. So you didn't worship Buddha as God, so to speak. N no, not I didn't see myself worshiping Buddha. I saw myself yeah. worshiping the laws of the universe. All right. And what laws are those then? Um, I was uh, well. The chant broken down into. Um, translate would be um, the devotion. Uh, I devoted myself to the mystic law of cause and effect through sound and vibration. All right. And uh, the sound and vibration was this chant that we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you found that that helped you in your life uh, when you started to do yes, that? Yes, I believed it did. I really yeah. believed that. And uh, obviously it did, because you wouldn't have believed if it didn't. No, I was in it a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, in a, in a way, it did, it did help you, seemingly. You believed that, and you know, yeah. apparently it, it yes. did. Yes, because I really, you know, believe that the laws of the universe. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. And there are laws in the universe, yeah, aren't there? Exactly. There are that. Yeah. And uh, so... It was the the friendships, the people you knew, and these these chantings uh, that that kept you going in this faith. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I remember you're telling me that you wanted to increase your district. Yes, I became a district leader. All and right. Um, now, how large of an area was that? Well, if, when they say it wasn't the area, well. Yes, or my district covered um, uh, the south of Sweden. There was uh, Halmstad, and yeah. there was Bostad, and there was uh, the Falcon Bay, and there was uh, yeah. a couple of other places here. Yeah, all right. And there were just some people in each one of these places. Yes, so you were leader of that district or region. Uh, yes. Yeah, and uh, you were endeavoring district, to yeah. increase your your. Uh, yes. Membership, was, or yeah. yeah, yes, to increase the district to make it larger. Now, did you get uh, economical reimbursement for that, or was it just no? It, it wasn't about money. No, so it was just to. It was help about spreading, spreading this uh, philosophy or religion, as yeah. it were, to bring peace upon to the earth. And yeah, our our goal was world peace. 
Yeah. Yeah. And did you did you through individual happiness? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And did you increase your membership? Or I don't know if that's the right word. Yes, but it did was you get going. It was it was it was growing. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say leaps and bounds, slowly but surely, but it was growing. Yeah. Were the people rich, poor, middle class, uh, old, it was, it young, was or mixture? Mixture. Yes. All right. That brought in different types of people. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And uh, in your in your faith there. What were some of the, there, there weren't uh, no don'ts, uh, you could do whatever you wanted to, it seems like, mm -hmm. but what were the things mentioned that you should do? What, what should you do? Uh, chant every day, and, and see, when you say this chant over and over again, it's called chanting daimoku, that's, yeah. uh, and, that's and doing daimoku every day for as long a period of time as you as you can as you want and yeah and and pushing yourself to do it more and more and more to see results in your life all right mm. so and you chant a lot for, to be able to grow in my case of chanting to grow my district or chanting you could chant for every whatever you want you can chant right. for money you could chant for friends you could chant if you're sick to make yourself well it was like that and this is a particular prayer you're chanting or did you just make something no, up to no chant, you don't make it up everyone does the same words the same chant and uh, we had a book that we read with prayers in it uh, and five prayers we read um, and which language was that written in well we said it and we did it in Sanskrit all right was, uh, Sanskrit yeah the ancient uh, yeah Mm. language in India or the yes. part of Asia, yeah. And did you understand what the, the words meant then? Or yes, there was, uh, f uh, was um, there was, uh, there is um, uh, for clotting. Explanation. There is an explanation yeah. for the words and what the words right. mean. Yeah. Uh, some of the words, you know, like they meant uh, our feelings, uh, they call worlds that you go through every moment of every day. Yes. If you're angry or you're hungry or, if, or you're, you're, you're feeling sad or you're feeling happy and all of these things are written down. It's a very deep uh, thing with the prayers. Yes, yeah. Mm. So that chanting is a type of prayer, you would say. Yes, that's uh. the overall prayer. And then there, are, then there are the prayers we read from the book. Yes. Now, would you do that at the altar, or do you do it when you're you out do that walking? No, or you do that. You do can do the chanting while you're out walking. It's a phrase that you do. Yeah. But the other way, the otherwise, when you sit to worship, you sit in front of the altar and you read that book. And yeah. in my case, you can read it so often, and you get to know it by heart. And yeah. you and in 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 the in that altar, uh, there is a piece of paper. And it's called a Gahansa, and you you post a chant to this paper. Yes. So there were no Buddha figures in that altar. There's just a piece of paper. Yeah, paper. And uh, so this was kind of the the scriptures or the holy book, this little prayer book or chant. Yeah, book. that's that that's, that's that was the prayer book. And, and ten pages or fifty or. Well, yeah, it's a very thin yeah, book. Yeah, it's a little book. It covers. A so you were encouraged to chant. That was kind of the, the key to give you success. And whether you were sick or needed money or yeah. uh, better education or whatever. Yes. So there was, um, was there an emphasis on doing good works, uh, helping the poor? Yes, or yes. Um, uh, they, s they established, yes, people would, yes, we are supposed to help others. And yeah. And, um, and more than ourselves and like that. It's moral, yeah. morally yeah. okay. Um, this, in, this, in this philosophy, they're involved, there are many people involved from all walks of life and all other religions also. All right, so you could have your it's other religion. Like I came from a Christian background. Uh -huh. There's atheists, there's Christians, right, there's yeah. Baptists, there are others, you know, mm -hmm. who are looking for more or something else. Would you have uh, to renounce your religion to join? No, Buddhism, you don't have to do that. Yeah. I asked that question and All they right. said, no, you don't have to. You know, mm -hmm. you can, um, 
you can still just you can still keep uh, praying to God just as long as you do this chant. Yeah. You know. So I figured, okay. So when you got together at these conferences or your meetings, you were probably a lot of people chanting. Yes. Sometimes, if if one was standing outside of the door, and there was a large meeting with a large amount of people, it doesn't have to be so large. But everyone was doing this chant because they say the same phrase over and over and over and over again. Yes. It would sound like a motor running. Yeah. It mm. would sound like a motor running or it would sound like a, um, a, a, something other than what was actually being mm. said. Um, there was a little girl who went home to uh, one of another little girl whose mother sat and chanted one day. And... Um, this little girl went back home and told her mother that um, her friend's mother was sitting in front of this altar and, and looking at a piece of paper and saying, Yeah, hawing and penga, yeah, hawing and penga, I don't have any money, I don't yeah. have any money. It sounded like that yes. to her, but it could yeah. sound different, different yeah. ways to different people. Yes. But everybody together would mm. sound like a motor running. Yeah, it, it must be uh, hypnotizing and uh, yes, going into a trance. Did you ever. It, Ah. feel that you were hypnotized or went into a trance? As, yes, sometimes pretty close to that. Uh, one time when I was sitting at my altar and I was had been chanting for hours, just sitting in one spot. And all of a sudden, that piece of paper seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and I felt like I was being drawn up into the box, getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm. That That experience happened to me just one time. It was... Yeah. Very interesting, to yeah. say the least. Yes. Did it yeah. frighten you, or no? It wasn't frightening. It mm. was hypnotic. Yeah. I tried to get it back a few times, but I, I never got mm. that. Never got it back. I never sat that long again. Yeah. And some of your friends or other people did they have similar experiences? Did you ever talk about that? Uh, I've mentioned it to a couple of, but they, they no, uh, not that I know of. All right. But I'm sure that there have been other experiences yes, like that. Yes, yes, all right, yeah, interesting. <laughs> so you would worship mostly in homes. Uh, did you worship every day or did you have your meetings on special days? Um, you mean the, the, no, we had meetings on Sundays. Sunday, that would be like the the special meeting day. Yes, yeah. that we would go to uh, oh, wherever, yeah, just the community center. And here in Sweden, there was um, it's a place in uh, Bjurlöv. Yeah. We go to sometimes and, um, yeah, meet in people's homes. Yeah. But mostly, but see, when, when we are a group of people and they begin to grow and be so many members, yes. then we have to split it. And then yes. we have to start going to different places and, yes. mm. and like that. Mm. Interesting, you met on Sundays. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, but you worshipped every day? In, in my, uh, per uh, privately in my yeah. own home, yes. yes. Mm. Now, uh, how long did you practice this? It must have been at least 10, 20 years. I practiced Buddhism for 40 years. 40 years. Mm. And... Uh, did you find that it uh, satisfied your soul? I mean, you were in it a long time, so you must have. I found it fun, uh, interesting, you know. Uh, but the only thing was that in the back of my head, I was still wondering that there was no God in this. And, yeah. and something was just didn't feel right there, but I kept pushing that feeling away. Yes. You know, still not wanting to follow any rules. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you have, uh, I've seen, uh, once I was riding the train in India, and uh, I saw a woman there with beads, and I thought, well, that must be a Catholic. In my ignorance, I thought it was only Catholics that use beads. <laughs> and, uh, well, I asked her, and she said she was Buddhist, and I was quite shocked. <laughs> a Buddhist with beads. And yeah. uh, <laughs> did you have any prayer beads? Yes, I did. All right. Prayer beads. Oh, these prayer beads, uh, I think it's a 110 beads around on the whole ring, and then there's, if you hold it, the beads in a certain way, it looks like a human being because there is 
a long row of beads with the round little tufts, a little round ball on top. And you have the head and the arms, then you have the, the ring of beads, then you have two more, it looks like legs. Mm -hmm. and, um, and when you hold the beads a certain way, you, you hold it so that it looks like this around your fingers and your hand. Ah, it's yes. the infinity sign. Yes, yeah. And um, they say when you hold the beads this way, it, it, um, it um, represents your, your holding your wishes in your hands. Mm. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, and you're chanting about your wishes, you know, and they're that by doing that, you're helping them to come true, All right. your wishes also. Yes, and some of them uh, came true for you. Uh, yeah. I was yeah. I was happy, yeah. I thought. I yeah. was really happy. Yeah. So so the beads, the hundred and ten beads, are they words in Sanskrit or no. prayers or doesn't doesn't uh, matter? No, it they don't have a meaning no, specifically you can, or you, you you can hold them and you can hold take one bead at a time between your fingers and hold while you're saying this phrase yes. for each one of those beads. Yeah. As you All do right. it and every time you do that you you're saying a prayer for that or whatever it is you yeah. at the same time you're thinking about something you want mm -hmm. to think about. Yeah. And um, in the religion, the Buddhist branch that you're in, was there a goal of personal development, uh, a particular goal you should reach? Yes, well you should always reach to um, to convert as many people as possible. To, to and your, to your make religion. make and to and the goal is 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 um, uh, world peace through individual happiness. All right. So you should strive to be happy. Mm -hmm. If everyone's happy, then there'll be peace. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's the general idea. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, all right. What about uh, your sins? We all make mistakes and do things wrong from time to time, some people more than others. Mm. Of course, in mm. this mm. religion you're talking mm. about, there was really nothing that was wrong. Mm. No. But uh, from childhood, at least, you knew to steal was wrong or other things oh. that you probably did. Yes. How did you get your sins forgive, forgiven? This, this about sins, in, in, in Buddhism, we don't, it's not sins in the, in the sense of like Christianity, not like that. We call things like karma. All right. Uh, things that happen to you or things you do, you're creating your karma and it can be good or bad, whatever you're doing. Yeah. And that's how you gauge your, what you're supposed to be doing and not supposed to be doing. Yes. I mean, if you want a good life, they say, they say that if you want to know, we also believe in reincarnation. All right. If they say that if you want to know what your what you did in your past life, how you you know All right. if it was good or bad. L observe what your life is like now, mm -hmm. and if you want to know what your future life is going to be, observe <laughs> the causes that you are making now, because everything yeah. is based on a law of cause and effect. Yes. All right. So that's what that's what uh, we base. <laughs> But uh, I think you told me you you would never become a, a, a frog or a snake or a fly. It was if you were reincarnated. No, not in this branch. We don't believe that you become flies and frogs and grass and all of that. Uh, you, if you return as a not as a human being again, because you yes, you cannot escape your karma. Yeah, I and, don't and 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 different different forms of life. Um, they say different forms of life have different type of energy and have different karmas. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if the other branches <laughs> of Buddhism teach know. that you'd become a snake or a frog or a fly. I but don't know. Did you ever reach a, become like a god or you would just keep coming back again and again as a human being then? Yeah, until you get it right. Uh, and then, then what? <laughs> Well, then you would become a Buddha, I guess, but I yeah. never... Uh, you didn't uh, get that high. <laughs> 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 that, that <level. laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So, in this 
faith that you were in, who is God? Is there a creator? No, it's not like that in, 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 in Buddhism. Uh, it's very self-based. All right. And um, you do everything yourself. That's why you're chanting. You, you're supposed to be happy yourself and you're supposed to uh, create your, you create conditions in your life and, the, and you're supposed to clean up your own messes. Yes. And um, by chanting to these universal forces, the law of cause and effect and sound and vibration and yeah. Uh, the, the mystical law, the mystical mm -hmm. law, you, you, it's a law is that things happen and you don't know why, and, but that is yeah. a law of the universe and things like that. Yes, and, yeah. And by, by, mm. by um, uh, mm, putting yourself on the same vibration as these, these laws, yeah. you can I affect the things that happen in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can draw things to you, or you can push things away. All right, yes. And it's like that. So you have to help yourself. Yes. So when you're chanting, then this power, this help that you you receive, it comes from within yourself, or yes. does it come from maybe the universe? These vibrations and you comes from within yourself, and you hook up with the universe. Yeah. So it's like a it's a. You're in harmony with yes. one with the earth or the universe. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's almost saying like uh, you're you are God or have yes. almost have divine power in a way. Mm. See, I didn't look at it in that way. No. When I was Buddhist, I was just looking at it. Okay, we're here to help ourselves. You know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah, mm. so this went on for 40 years, mm. and, and then what happened? I was, working, um, I was working in a network marketing field, and I wanted to grow my business also. And I went to a convention, and at this convention, the person leading the convention, um, after she was teaching us about growing our business, she was also a Christian, and she yes. was going to have a, a meeting after this, uh, the convention, the business part. Mm -hmm. After the business part, she wanted to have a meeting with all of those who wanted to come to a church, uh, a church meeting, you know, a, a, prayer, a prayer meeting. And uh, I wasn't going to go, but my sister, who I w went with, said she was going to go, and I didn't feel like sitting in a whole hotel room by myself, so no. I tagged along. Yes. And this person was talking about the Bible, and she was saying that the Bible, in the Bible there were stories about murder and sex and all of these things, and I said, what? Mm. I couldn't wrap my head around that. I all said, right. what is yeah. she saying about the Bible? Yes. And she was talking about herself and her own experience, and she was very transparent. This yes. beautiful person standing there calling herself whore and everything. And I, 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 I wasn't used to somebody being that transparent. And she was talking more about it. And then suddenly she says, well, I'm giving out Bibles. And she was giving out these Bibles. I hadn't intended to get a Bible, but somehow I saw myself getting up out of my seat and going to the front, extending my hand and taking a Bible. Yes. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I went back to my seat and my sister was smiling. I said, what are you smiling about? Yes. She says, you just got a Bible. Yes. I said, yeah. So, you know. So you didn't, you hadn't convinced your sister to become a Buddhist. I told her about it, yeah. you know, but she, she wasn't convinced. Yeah. She was know. probably praying for you. Well. Or your mother. Yeah, I had a daughter who was praying for me. Yes, <laughs> yes. You met her. Yes. And, um, and so... You kind of went up and get that, got that Bible against your own desire. Yeah, somehow. I wasn't thinking to do it. I just yeah. did it. Yeah. Yeah. It was almost like an angel came and picked you Somebody up and took you. Up yeah, there I saw. I was, I was almost like I could see myself outside of myself going to the front because I wasn't yeah. thinking to do this. Yes. Yeah. And that. And yeah, this is just like two or three years ago, right? It's not yeah. too long ago. No, it was. It was. Yeah, it was shortly, just shortly before. 
we met. Yes. Yeah. In about one year, one and a half year, one and a, about two years, fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah it was. And uh, so you went and got the Bible, and uh, did you? You were still. Uh, you still had your altar there in your home, and you were doing your chanting, and. Yeah, I was. I I came home with the Bible, and uh, I I had it lying on the on the the the, uh, the um the table in front of my sofa, and I was looking at it, and I just opened the first page to the first page, and there were the prayers, and and how to how to pray, how to say prayers, and how to invite Christ into your life, and you have to s say that with your mouth, that you invite mm -hmm. him into your life. And then yes. there was a prayer that you could pray. Yes. And I wondered, uh, out of curiosity, I wondered what would happen if I just said this prayer out loud, you know. And I just read it right from the page. And all of a sudden I felt this strange feeling of, like it, it wasn't. I didn't get goosebumps, but I felt like mm. the warmth or cold yeah. over me. Yes. And I felt like suddenly I, it got very, very quiet. Now, I mean, it was quiet, but it got even more quiet, like strangely quiet. And I felt like I was looking from inside a bubble or something, because there was no sound, not not even a vibration, nothing. Mm -hmm. yes. And I felt like everything was like a concave. I was looking around, it was like concave, and my eyes rested on my room where I have my altar. Mm -hmm. And I had the same feeling like I had when I get up, went up to get the Bible. I got up and went into that room and I saw this altar and all of, I started taking things off the walls and dismounting, dismantling this altar, and putting everything together your, your and Buddhist, packing it your away. Buddhist, your Buddhist symbols everything, and beads, uh, yeah. The diplomas, everything, books, the incense, ev everything. Diplomas that was from graduating or from courses uh, or yes, no, from um, uh, yes. I was also helping with when we had great big conventions. I was on the art committee to right. help and things like that. And yeah, and I was putting all of these things into bags and boxes, just dismantling. Yeah. And after I did that this bubble thing went away and I looked around the room and I couldn't believe I had done that. I, mm. It was a very strange feeling. And then yes. I went to the phone and I called the, the woman who was a leader over me and I told her that if she'd come and get these things because if she doesn't, I'm gonna, gonna throw it away on the, take it to the, mm. <laughs> to the garbage dump. Yeah, and how did she react? And she said, what? What happened? Now she reacted that way because this was the 19th of January. The 1st of January, I was at a, a big Buddhist, our yearly meeting, yeah. Buddhist meeting. And that's where all the district leaders and the chapter leaders, and they all get together and they, and they one by one, they stand up in front of the, 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 yes. the room and they make a pledge mm. to grow their districts or their chapters by so and so many people. And I had made a pledge that I was going to grow my district by three more people by the end of the year. And everybody was yay and happy. Mm -hmm. And now I'm calling her the 19th to say, I'm not Buddhist anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. Come and get these things. Mm -hmm. And she was like, what? What has happened? I said, I said, Lena, I ca you know what? I can't do this anymore because, uh, you know, there is no God in this. I'm not raised this way. And and I don't feel comfortable anymore doing this. Mm. All um, right. And they came and got the things. And yes. And, uh, we are still friends to this day, but I'm just not sure. Buddhist anymore. Yes, I, I just want to take a pause and read uh, one of my favorite Bible okay. verses. It's All actually right. from Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And Paul is writing in to the Corinthians, and um, you mentioned a whore and uh, some of those people in Corinth had had that uh, lifestyle and also murderers and yes. liars. Yes. And, uh, and he said to them, therefore, excuse me, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And it seems, Andrea, that, that Jesus, that God was beginning to, to make a new creation in you. Yes. 
And uh, those old things were beginning to pass away. Yes, amazing. And uh, to make a new creature in you. Yes. Uh, he's our creator, isn't he? Yes, he is. I am so glad that, um, you know, all, that, all of that time that I was in Buddhism, he has had his hand on me. I had been grieving the Holy Spirit the whole time, all right, pushing yeah. it back. But he did not. He never gave up on me. No. And he he, he never gave up on me. Yeah, forty years is a long time to wait. Yes, it is. Mm. Talk about grieving the Holy Spirit. Yes. I I, I could have easily gone been lost. Mm. Yes. Yeah. God had his hand over you, didn't he? Yes, and another thing, the seed that was planted by my mother and father. Yes. I believe that helped a lot also. Definitely. Because that, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, you raise up a child in the way it should go and it, it will not depart from it. Yes. I departed, but it was temporary. I, it was still yeah. there. Yes. And, 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 and God held his hand on that seed that whole time. Mm. Yes, yes. Yes. Now, I would just like to take our remaining time for this interview to talk a little bit more about Christ and mm. Christianity. We've talked a, a bit about Buddhism now. We're yes. going to compare and contrast them a little bit. So you would say you met Christ there through this seminar and you got the Bible, and you came back. And what, what continued to happen? Oh, so many things have happened. And I haven't, you know, I'm, I'm still newly reborn, but, yes. it, and, but it feels like many years have passed because so many things have happened mm -hmm. in my life. Yes. From, and reading the Bible, many things that I was doing, I found that was wrong. Um, so there are from rules. Reading, uh, yes, there are rules, and now I accept those rules gladly. Yeah. Yes. You know, a God is not a God of confusion. There has to be rules. Yes. You know, I think about, you know, the Church of Satan or Satanism. Their, their motto, the underlying principle is, do thou what thou will. Hmm. Do what you want to do. And uh, <gasps> that's no rules. Yes, exactly. And uh, it's uh, sobering to think about that. Yes, That's worshiping Satan, isn't it? Yes, it is. And so now you see those rules are for our best, aren't they? Yes. Hmm. Rules are needed. I mean, think about the universe. Think if there was no rules in the universe. Yes, that's true. <laughs> How would that look? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh, how else would you say your, your life has changed or how, how do you know personally that Jesus exists? Do you, you have experience now that you didn't have in your youth. Yes, I do. Um, so many things. Um, I, I have, after getting in to read the Bible, I always prided myself on, I could eat and drink whatever I wanted. All right, yes. And I did. I mean, I was into, I ate and drank everything. And, yes. and, and, and even on, it, on the, the drug scene, I think they all accept the really hard, heavy stuff. But, yes. you know, the smoking and the, all of that and the music. And the, I mean, I was here and I never sang in the United States. But when I came here to Sweden, I met some people and I started singing. That's how I got into jazz and blues and, and all of these other the types on the scene with different um, musicians and... Uh, Denmark and Sweden and around. Yes. And uh, and I like to paint. And my my way of painting, you know, the the way artists paint, they paint anything yeah. sexually, or something they call it art. Yes. And I was doing that, and the way of dress. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was as provocative as possible. Yes. The more provocative, and I had a filthy mouth. They yes. called me the dirty bodhisattva <laughs> because I loved to tell jokes and keep them laughing. I mean, mm. I could, t and they were the nastiest, rawest, yeah. 
jokes, All things. Right. So it, as long as people would laugh, I, yes. I'd say it, you know, mm -hmm. without a blush, without anything. And so you. So I mean, yeah. from that, I went a completely yeah. different uh, so things that used to seem funny to me before. Yeah. It's not funny anymore. So you you changed um, your style of drinking and eating, and actually the Bible uh, discourages us to from drinking alcohol, for example. Yeah. The, the Bible prohibits drinking of alcohol. Yes. The the Bible prevents from eating certain types of meat, exactly. certain types of animals. So there are many health rules in the Bible, and mm. you found them now to be a, a blessing yes. in your life, haven't you? Yes. Yes. And. So you made some changes in your eating and drinking habits and your dress. The, yes. the Bible tells us, not only the ladies, but uh, especially the ladies, that uh, they are to clothe themselves modestly. Exactly. Not to provoke or <gasps> dress provocatively. Mm. And also the music you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks a lot about music. Mm, yes and uh, the music, the, the proper types of music to glorify exactly. God, our Creator. And, yes. and also you mentioned the uh, speech. The Bible tells us our speech is to be seasoned with salt. Yes. And uh, we're to have a pure speech. So these changes have come from an understanding of the Word of God, haven't they? Yes. Yes. Those are drastic changes. Now how how have some of your friends reacted to that, or your, your family? <laughs> oh, my family is happy. <laughs> my, right. uh, yes, my um, brothers and sisters are happy. And um, my f some of my friends, they tell me flat out, I liked you better when you were Buddhist. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't understand, <laughs> you know. No. I said, well, whether you understand or not, Jesus is coming back anyway. You know, yes. and this is one of the reasons why I'm making this. I mean, I love the Lord, and then Jesus is Amen. coming back, and I want to be ready. Yes. It would be nice if you were ready too, mm. if you would just listen. Uh, well, they don't want yes. to listen, but um, yeah. I'm still praying for yeah. them. I have one friend that um, told me she's never, she doesn't want me to talk about it to her. But yeah. before I, um, not long, for two weeks ago, she told me, you know, when you came to visit me, if you had asked me to pray, I would have done it. I was like, mm. <gasps> so yes. I told her, I said, all yeah. right. I said, when I come back to Homestead, yes. I'm going to sing you a song because she says she complained. She never heard me sing. Mm. I'm going to sing all you right. a song and we're going to have a prayer. She yeah. said, okay. Mm. So that's what I'm going to do. I yes. have a little job waiting for me when I get back to Homestead. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you had remained uh, in the Buddhist faith, where do you think you would be today? I mean, it's just maybe three years ago. I think, I, I don't know if God would have waited any longer for me. Mm. I'd probably be lost. Yes. I probably would be lost. Mm. Because I was well on my way there. Yeah. Yes. I want to read a, another Bible verse that's a dear verse to me, and I, I know it's also precious to you. And uh, <clears throat> I've never been a Buddhist. I've always been a Christian in, in my life, though I've not always had a personal friendship or a, a, living, a living friendship with Christ. I've never gone into other religions. Mm. Of course, I've done sometimes what I wanted to do, my own thing. But I've always had that uh, Christian Christianity in me, to, so to speak. And uh, one of my favorite verses is uh, from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, 29, and 30. Come unto me, all ye that are, excuse me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy my burden is light. Mm. And um, that's a happy life. <laughs> yes. The blessed it life. Is. It is. You know you're not fighting your own battles alone, trying oh. to get up the strength from it within yourself, connecting with the universe. This is connecting with Christ, the Creator. What a with blessing. God Himself. And, you know, we go back to the oxen uh, pulling the, the cart or the plow, and they had the wood on them. Mm. And that was an instrument to make the work easier. Mm. And uh, actually, we're going together side by side with Jesus Christ. 
Yes. And he is there to help us to fight our battles. And that is a wonderful blessing to know, to be able to say, Lord, this is not my fight, this is your fight, please help me, you know. And, yes. And know you're going to get help. Yes. Some would say that's weakness. Well, we are not as strong as the Lord, no. We cannot do anything without Christ. Yes. And with oh, Christ, we can do all things. Yeah, with Christ, we can do all things. That's right. Yes. Yes. And so we have the privilege to place our burdens upon Jesus. And he promises to bear them, to, to come unto him, to surrender our lives to him. Yes. And to take up our yoke upon him. And, and that yoke is also accepting the rules he has. Yes. And yes. uh, even those rules will be uh, emancipating for us when we really understand them, yes. right? You feel better now physically than you did before, don't that you? That is so true. I mean, mm. I, I, am, I am so thankful. I feel so, it's like a burden yes. has been lifted off. And it, it's so, like mm. his yoke is light. Yes. Even, yes. you know, it's amazing with all of the problems and everything that's going on in the world. Yes and everything to be able to feel happy mm. anyway and yes. truly happy mm. and hope yeah. for the future yes because without Christ there is no hope yes this future this world is going to die and Jesus is coming back yes yes and after then there is eternal life mm. afterwards yes yes how 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 do you worship now you took that altar down mm. uh, do you, you don't do your, your chanting? No. Do you probably pray? Do you, do you have written prayers? Or do you pray from your heart? Now? Yes. Yeah, I, saw, I have some, some things. I have a list of names on paper. Yes, all right. You pray for people. Uh, yes. Or, yes. And I, I, I pray. And there are some prayers in the Bible I look at. Yes. I pray. And I pray with God when I'm... Pray to God when I, I'm learning to make Jesus my real friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. To walk and talk <coughs> with him. All the, just talking with him as if he's a friend next yes. to me. That's right. And yes, yes, all the time under the day. And sometimes it's not always easy. But we, 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 are not, we are supposed to pick up our cross and follow him. So it's not supposed to be easy. Yes. Yeah. Not now. So mm. th that, that's part of the character making. Yes, yes. Now, the... Yeah, I would just like to, to share um, a, a thought here from the Bible. The, Jesus uh, met this woman from Samaria at the well. Mm. And Jesus said that God is seeking such people, people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's an interesting combination. This woman was not uh, a Jew, but the Holy Spirit was working in her heart, upon her heart, and she was interested in, in the truth. And somehow God has sought you out. He was seeking you to worship him in spirit and in truth. And hmm. God is seeking for such people. At the same time, the common thought today is uh, all roads lead to heaven. You can worship whatever way you want to and get to heaven. You know, there's no unique uh, religion. All religions are the same. They all lead to God. Uh, no, I'm, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I have to not, I do not agree with that. That's not. Uh, All right. No. There's only one narrow road to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, who yes. gave his blood to buy us. We yes. are not our own. Yes. Our bodies are not our own. Jesus Christ owns them. Yes. And if we don't recognize that, then you're lost. Mm. And so all roads do not lead to heaven. Yes, well. And there's only, there's a wide road, and then there's a narrow road. The yes. narrow road leads to heaven, and that wide road is the one that everything, everybody thinks that all roads lead to heaven. They're on that road. Mm. And that's yeah. not leading to heaven. 
it's uh, on that road you have the underlying principle do as you want to do yes yes when you want how you want with no rules yes. that is the road to destruction yes perdition and uh, actually there are some Bible verses that uh, we're familiar with uh, for example where Jesus says I am the way the truth and the, and life. the life that's right and uh, he's not saying he is a truth or a life. No. He is life. He is truth. He is the one. Yes. And uh, that excludes um, other means to come to God. Hmm. It seems narrow-minded and strict, but that's the way God says it, and we have to accept it, don't we? That's right. Now, there is a measure of truth partial truths in other religions and oh, that's yes, go ahead that's how the devil works you see yes he takes the truth and he puts a little bit of poison in it yeah and it's not true anymore i mean yeah if someone was to sit a bottle of poison in front of you with a skull and crossbones on and say drink this poison you wouldn't drink it no but if you if you had your favorite food in front of you and there's a little drop a poison in it, you would eat that. We because it's your favorite food. You wouldn't even know it's there. Yeah, all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if someone said, oh, I just put just a little yeah. drop of poison in it, yeah. would you eat it? <laughs> no, <not>. you would <laughs> not. <laughs> no, of course not. So, not even with just a little, no, little, little drop. No, and the devil is like that. Yeah. He doesn't care. You can worship the Lord 99.9 tenths percent. Yeah. That 1% mm. is all he wants. Yes. Just yeah. that little percent. And he's, you yeah. can do what you, that's the way they told me in Buddhism. You can do what you want. You can yeah. pray to God if you want. You can go to church if you want. All you have to do is chant. Mm. Yeah. So that's like that. Yes. If, if I, I can just ask you a question back in the Buddhism, did, was there a devil or Satan in, in that faith? Yeah, there were different kinds of devils and they had different functions and and, right. and demons and things like that and some of them were good and some of them were bad good demons or yes all right that's mm -hmm. interesting yeah yeah but it wasn't the the biblical not in the bi not in the biblical sense no. no 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 yes and uh then there's another verse and i just want to read it because it's uh, a very nice verse uh that uh, the apostles, they spoke to some people. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, they were Jews and uh, telling them about Jesus Christ. And uh, it's uh, Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So Peter told the people, Salvation in none other, only through Jesus Christ. And it's, it's only through his name, his character, given among mankind, through which we must be saved and are able to be saved. So the Bible tells us that salvation can come only through Jesus Christ. And of course, you did not have that message in your religion, did you, before? No, no. Yes. There was no mention of Jesus Christ at all. And uh, that is the uniqueness of Christianity, is Jesus Christ. Yes. And he is salvation. Yeah. And the, the Bible tells us that we all have sinned. Hmm. Sin is transgressing God's law or breaking his rules. And from that transgression, from that disobedience, we need to be saved. We need salvation. And it's only through the blood of Jesus that he shed as we accept him and give our hearts, our lives to him and follow him, yes. that we can be forgiven yes. as we confess our sins yes. and be saved from those sins. Yes, we need to repent and be baptized. There is no mantra, no chant. I could chant for 50 years, but I couldn't forgive my sins or no. blot out my sins, could no. I? No, no way, no way. We I can't mean, do that ourselves. Repent yeah. and be baptized. Yes. In Jesus, only through Jesus. Yes. And uh, so I know Jesus has done many things in your life, in your life, and uh, you're a new creation. And 
We praise God for that. Yes, thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. And thank you. There's a, another aspect that I would just like to, to um, mention in, in regards to this salvation. It, it's not only forgiveness of sins, but it's uh, a saving from our sins. You know, the name Jesus actually means Jehovah or God is salvation. Mm. And uh, the Bible tells us in Matthew 1, 21, that for he shall save his people from their sins. And so this salvation, it only can come through Jesus. It's the forgiveness of our sins, and it's the power to break free yes. from the bondage of sin. And yes. uh, in connection with that, I just want to read one verse from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So the gospel has the power. Yes, it does. And I can attest to that. All of the changes that I have made in my life, I could not do them without Jesus Christ. Yes. I could not ever dream <laughs> of doing the changes that are in my life now alone. Yes. No way. Yes. No way. Yeah. And um, it's, an, it's, a, it's emancipating or liberating, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. True, true liberty. Oh. True happiness. True. I would like to read a, another Bible verse okay. here. And uh, it's actually <coughs> from the Old Testament. From excuse me. Excuse me. Also from the prophet <laughs> Jeremiah. And uh, it's chapter 10, verse 10. And I'm going to read verse 11 and verse 12 also. But the Lord is the true God. <laughs> Interesting yes. statement. He is the living God and an everlasting king. So he's true, he's alive, and he's everlasting. Yes. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Thus shall ye say unto them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. So the gods that have not made the heaven and not made the earth, they're going to perish. These false religions are going to come to naught. Hmm. And, and when God comes to judge the world, and it, it says that he hath made the earth by his power and stretched out the heavens. So this mentions God as the creator. And uh, that's a unique uh, story um, it, within Christianity, the belief of creation by God in seven literal days. There are creation stories in other religions, but uh, seven literal days of creation is unique to the Bible. It's like the foundation. And, and the, the seventh day, God rested, didn't he? Yes, he did. And uh, he wanted to spend that time in communion fellowship with his creation. And he took that time off. God is very busy, but he took that seventh day off to rest. And he blessed that day, he sanctified it. And uh, that's why we have a seven-day week today. Exactly. And uh, yeah. how does that affect your worship today? I don't understand how Well, I mean... You, before, before you went to your meetings on Sundays, Yes. do you still go to your meetings on Sunday no, today? I have Sabbath on Saturday, Sabbath, exactly the way God intended for it to be. Yes. Sure, I worship him all, all the time. Yes, that's right. He's worthy, <laughs> isn't he? All the time, every yeah. day, but the every special day. day is the Sabbath. Yes, and that's a... Honor and of his creation, yes, isn't it? Yes, and it's wonderful looking forward to the Sabbath because when the Sabbath, when the sun goes down Friday night and goes down on Saturday night, the Sabbath is passed. And from that point on, I'm preparing, looking forward mm. to the Sabbath again. Yes. So everything I do yeah. on is, during the week is geared towards the Sabbath again. Yes. And it feels wonderful. That day of rest yes. is like a tall drink of cold water in a wasteland desert now hot desert it's mm, such a yes refreshing a wonderful refreshing yeah. day yes I and mm -hmm. and 
this creation is tied together with God being our, our judge also, yes. doesn't it? Yes. And not yes. only that, with our with yes. our salvation, it says that he blessed and sanctified the Sabbath and um, God needs to give us rest, as we read in Matthew chapter 11, to come unto him to get that rest. Mm. And the blessing, it means to take away our sins and forgive us and, and the, the sanctification is to, to keep us holy. So it's giving us rest, making us holy and keeping us holy. And you mentioned earlier about being ready when Jesus comes back. Yes. The Sabbath, the keeping of the Sabbath from week to week, it's, you know, we pray, prepare to meet Jesus, don't we? Yes, we do, because we're going to be, the millennium is about the Sabbath also. Yes. And, well, I, I, I want to thank you, Andrea, for <laughs> being here with us today. <laughs> and thank you for being here and having me. Yeah, thank you for your time. And we thank you also for our viewers that you were able to be with us and to watch and we encourage you to make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior and to follow him with your whole heart. Yes. It's such a Amen. blessing and we thank you and yes, may God bless you. Amen.